What's the secret to creating your reality? What is the secret that powerful manifestors have that so many other people are actually missing? You know, people that go out and build businesses of their dreams, lives of their dreams, that constantly manifest more. For dating, guys that get good at approaching, get good at meeting women. What is it that they do that's a little different? We're gonna talk about that in this video. This is Brian, I'm coming to you from Bucharest, Romania. I'm taking a little walk down the side street away from the cars here. And, um, and this is a video that's kind of a continuation of last week's video where I talked about uh, definitiveness, the power of definitiveness, right? And if you haven't seen that video, definitely check that out after this one, because this will build on that idea, how you use that definitive energy along with what I'm gonna talk about today um, to create a powerful reality. That again, the dating reality, the approaching money, success, health, um, now, I want to qualify this with, I've seen this work with so many clients when they finally get it over and over again. I see it work in successful people I've never met before because I, when I interview them in the podcast that's going to be coming up, they're all doing this basic principle. I've seen it work with teachers from years ago, like when Neville Goddard talks about his principles. I see these principles in his teachings and so many other teachers that are out there um, and in my own life. You know, I travel the world. I'm currently in Bucharest, Romania. I was just in Texas. I was just, I, <laughs> I skied for three years in Bozeman, Montana. I took some time off, as some of you know. Um, I'm probably I'm gonna be heading to Hawaii next month to do a special singing event. I have a, a really good life, but it wasn't always that way. I had to learn these principles, and I learned the basics of them from my teacher Carl. And I've been redeveloping them for the last 15 to 20 years to help people understand them faster, quicker, easier, to get better at them. Because it did take a long time to really embody these, because you know I'm all about the embodiment. So what does that look like? Let's dive in. But before we do, I wanna invite you to like, subscribe, share, do all that beautiful stuff, do the thing right down there. And that's it, let's dive in. What is it that I'm talking about? Well, Really good manifestors are really good with tension, right? You know I talk about that all the time. We're gonna add more to that. That's not where it's gonna end. So there's an idea of an intention. You're putting something into tension, intention. I have an intention. And when I wanna create something, like the events I'm doing this, this week, I have two events going on. There are two five-day events and uh, here in Bucharest. I have two days between them. There's a lot of tension in that. There's a lot of tension in getting clients there getting all the money sorted, getting all the locations sorted, getting uh, for the one event that has to do with intimacy. We've got a lot of women coming too, so it's gonna be a big event. You know, maybe I'll do some clips of it up in a high rise. Um, it's gonna be beautiful, but this, I rented out this sky bar for it. But there's a lot of elements that go into that, a lot of tension that I have to step into to make that happen. From finding just the right ladies to be in this event with the guys, to uh, making sure the guys are right for this event, the men that are coming in, to, stepping into it with my staff to make sure they show up and make sure every little piece is in place, right? And to do that, you've got to be solid with intention. You gotta be really good with the tension part of the mechanism. And when you get the tension part, it all starts to flow. What is the tension part? What do I mean by that? That's the part where you set an idea in mind and you see it but you don't think about how difficult it's gonna be, which is what most people do, it's what, what I used to do. You don't think about how challenging it's gonna be. And you gotta notice now, this is really important. You know I talk a lot about the emotional scale. When I say that, and I look at the, the, the end result in mind, I see it and I visualize it and I picture it, like for the mythology workshop that I'm doing this week, there's this idea of this beautiful space that we're gonna be in we're right on this beautiful street where there's all these people and cafes and restaurants. I have this image in mind and I hold it. I see it. I'm, I'm like, it's like relentless and I enjoy seeing it. I look at it, it's like a painting to me or art to me, um, but it's kind of 3D and I step into it, I see it, and then I tell my mind, my body to create that reality. And it won't necessarily look exactly like the reality in my mind, but the idea, the feeling if I hold it in mind and I'm relentless with it and I let go of all stories that tell me I can't do that, it tends to create. Now, of course, it's gotta be within reason because your mind can literally create just about anything you picture within reason, 
but it's got to be within your belief system to a degree of what's possible with a stretch. So now you can go extreme. You can go way beyond your belief system if you're really good with intention and that can be developed over time. But for the beginning, what I'm talking about is when I picture something in mind, I'm like, I want this, 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 and I stretch it. And I say these, I've never done all this before. So I want all this in my event, but there's a little part of me that feels like I can do it. I have a heart love for it. I have uh, a sense of definitiveness, which is that last video I was talking about. This is going to happen. I don't know how, but it's going to happen. If I go into the emotions of fear, doubt, worry, oh, this will be too hard. And I start pondering and creating images of how hard it's going to be, how difficult it's going to be. And I'm thinking heavy, like, yeah, I don't know about that. I, I could screw that up. I could get that wrong. If that does go wrong, what would I do? I'd look like a fool. I'd look like an imposter. Um, and I start really pondering this stuff. I'm destroying the intention. It's, it's literally falling apart in my mind. The image is falling apart. The feeling is falling apart. You see, I'm relentless with the image. And what happens is the mind, the gut brain, starts to feed up everything that needs to be taken care of to make that image happen. As long as you are holding the idea in mind, feeling it with your heart, I've got love for it. I really love this idea. I got my definitive energy, which comes from the gut, which I talked about in the last video. And there's a sense of certainty. This is going to happen. And that combo, along with your ability to even be a little turned on for it, passionate, is what manifests it. Um, now, I can go a lot deeper into that, but that base principle manifests a lot. Now, I want you to take this embodiment idea of manifesting a goal and I want you to think about it in some different ways. If you go back and think about anything you've fallen in love with, maybe it was a car. Yeah, here's some cars. Maybe you had this car you wanted to buy and you're like, I, got, I, I just, I'm in love with the idea of the car and you couldn't stop thinking about it if you wanted to because this momentum of thoughts around the end result of owning this car took you, took over and pretty soon you're picturing the car, you're seeing it all over the road because your reticular activating system's operating. You're seeing it in different colors, you're test driving, you're sitting there, you're going, this is my car. There's a part of you that can feel it, not just with your mind, you see it, but you have this appreciation, love for it. There's this certainty, this is gonna happen one way or another. I don't know how, I don't have the money yet, but it's gonna happen. There's even maybe a little turn on for the car, and then eventually it shows up in your life. Now, a lot of that happens unconsciously. We make that happen unconsciously. What I want to do is bring that to the conscious forefront and I want to invite you to do it in something that maybe you've never done it with before. This is how you build a business. You picture that first two clients relentlessly. I've been working on this with, with some coaches recently that want to build new business coaching businesses and they're, they're saying, I can't, I don't know, how do I get a client? I can hear the waffling. I can hear the worry. I can hear how it'll be hard. What if they don't like it? What if they, and they're creating this intention of lackadaisicalness, uh, lazy, like not laziness, but um, doubt, worry. And I'm like, you're not going to get clients with that kind of intention. Or you do, you're going to get clients that want to pay you much, that challenge you, that they feel your doubt and they buy into your doubt. They buy into who you're being. So when you create the image, you're constantly inserting that's happening. That's done. That's already happened energetic. That's already happened in my mind. That's already happened in the non-physical. That's already happened uh, in the universe. Now, I'm going to go a little more metaphysical with you. I'm going to go a little deeper now. On a metaphysical level, everything that can come into reality already exists, right? You can't learn to ride a bike if you didn't already have the ability to ride the bike before you learned. That sounds weird, but let's think about it for a minute. I can show you how to pedal. I can show you how to sit on the bike, but your body has to have the physical ability to, to balance before it learns to balance. Otherwise it can't learn to balance. So if you think about this and we go back in time to let's say the caveman days, the ability for, um, let's say a bicycle to work in the caveman days was there. Just nobody had built a bicycle yet, right? Nobody had the idea or even the concept. How about a plane? Could a plane fly when dinosaurs were here, right? Most likely it could. Maybe it would have got, maybe atmospheric pressure would have been off, but who knows how all that stuff goes. But you get the idea that 
that the principles are still the same, the elements are still on the earth, the ability to create a plane already existed before the plane came into being, and that's everything in the universe. So if you can hold an idea in mind, and you can really sit with that idea, and you can love it and appreciate it, and there's a sense that your heart gets invested, there has to be a way to bring it into being. If it's just your ego, your mind, then yeah, it's, it may not be something that you even want to bring into being and you'll probably go into fight with it. But if you have a love for it and you can cultivate a love for it, you can cultivate that turn on for it from your hips, you can cultivate this sense that show me how to create this, then there has to be a way to bring it into being. That doesn't mean it'll happen instantly. But if you start seeing it as already done in this energetic realm, I call it the energetic modeling, in this realm of this is already done and all I'm doing is creating, cultivating like a garden, the perfect soil for it to pop up in. If I keep cultivating the perfect soil for clients to pop up in my coaching business, I keep cultivating the perfect soil for women to pop up in my life and I keep nurturing that along from how I feel about myself to the way I maybe a little bit of working on the way I dress so I feel better, a little bit more confidence with subtle approaches. And I keep cultivating it and falling in love with it, the idea of it, and the image grows a little bit each day in my mind. It actually doesn't grow into reality. It becomes more, it reveals itself to me. Then what happens is the potentiality has to bring that into being. And eventually what you've been picturing in your mind just starts to come together because who you were being was relentless and falling in love and getting turned on for what was there. If you think about somebody carving a statue, when they're carving a statue, are they hoping the statue comes out good? <laughs> or do they already have, like when Michelangelo is carving David, does he have an image of David in his mind? He's seeing it and dreaming about it, thinking about it when he's not carving and he's, and he's got passion for creating this thing, turn on for creating this thing, and he keeps seeing it, and eventually, through sheer passion, he brings this beautiful piece of artwork into his life, right? Well, I would argue the guys who become the best with meeting women, dating women, making money, have this love for what they're doing. Like, some guys don't approach women at all, they do all online dating, but they have a love for it, and they, they fall in love with the whole art of it, or some guys become really good at approaching to the point where one of my buddies said he hey he, Robbie Kramer if you know who he is another dating coach he he said recently in one of his podcasts he um, he says he approaches two or three women and he, he, he feels like he's on MDMA and he says he gets so high from it I know other people like that I had a friend Jason years ago I haven't seen that guy in years but he was so, he lived in a van but he was addicted to meeting and approaching women and flirting with women to the point where it pulled him it was kind of life for him, almost to a fault, right? Because he wasn't happy unless he was doing it. He didn't know how to be happy on his own. And I think that's where things fell apart for him. That's where everything went wrong for him ultimately. But you can create this passion too. When you really find that place in your life where you really want to birth something, bring it into being, we call it your zone of genius. And you keep cultivating that feeling, the warmth, the fuzzy feeling in your body, the way you think changes. You can't help but see the end result in mind. So ask yourself, are the things that you want to bring into reality, stuff you constantly look at and think about what could go wrong? What if this happens? That could happen. Well, this might happen. I don't know. This is a challenge. This is hard. This is difficult. Oh, I don't want to do that today. Then there's something between you and manifesting it. If you look at Neville Goddard, he always said, start with the end result in mind and remember I don't think he said it that exactly that way, but he basically said it's already done. He would talk about how his teacher, Muhammad, would say that whatever you want to create is already done. And you've got to keep seeing it as already done. And this is another way of doing that. But in this way, I'm not just imagining it's already done. It's energetically done. Like, I see it literally. I, if I'm getting working on approaching women, I see them around me. and I'm talking to them. I'm seeing them responding. And I'm learning to not just doing that, not just able to feel their hand in mine, hear their, hear their voice with my ears right here and now, not in some fantasy world in my head, but I also cultivating the experience of feeling good. Like I'm seeing myself enjoy talking to her, whether she's happy or sad, whether she re rejected the approach or, uh, or didn't. I'm learning to like, wow, she laugh at the whole idea that I got rejected, so what? I'm learning to keep my heart open the embodiment part. I'm learning to 
feel that sense of certainty. Well, okay, and that's good. I got rejected. The next one will be that much better because, you know, it is a little bit of a numbers game as well as skill. The two go together. And there's a sense of learning to feel my grounding, my solidness, my certainty. And this is true with anything you want to manifest, right? So what is it that you most want to manifest? And I want to ask you to, to reverse this now. If you have a big goal in mind, how do you feel about it? Can you feel it in your heart? Do you feel like it's already done? Can you see it around you? Can you feel it in your stomach? Do you feel certainty, definitiveness? Like that's happening because it's already exists in this energetic realm Brian talks about. Or do you feel your turn on for it? Wow, it's gonna be awesome when I see that in the physical because I'm already enjoying it in my, you could say imagination, but in this energetic realm. And when you see that, and you feel that and you continue to feel that day in and day out and you keep getting like a little oxytocin pop every time you visualize it it's just going to get that much closer it's going to get that much closer to coming up so much so that you're going to start to see breadcrumbs you're going to see these little hints like wow it seems like girls are smiling at me more today um i i feel like i'm get, meeting all the right people to help bring my business into being or it seems like more girls are interested in introducing me to their friends because they're not single but they're like you're kind of interesting and i got a friend you know, these little things that happen that indicate that that's the right direction to go or suddenly I have this urge to go on Tinder and I'm kind of enjoying it. Whereas in the past, I hated being on Tinder. You know, why should, maybe there's just the right person waiting for you on Tinder. Unconsciously, energetically, that's being linked up. I don't really love Tinder. I'm not saying that, but you get the idea. Um, it's listening to that part of you when you're turned on that tells you, go here, do this, talk to that person. Because that stuff's happening for a reason, right? That stuff's happening to you because you're being guided. Once you can hold this image as already done, it's already done energetically. Let the potentiality bring it into reality. I like that. Let the potentiality bring it into reality. And um, if you see that, you can see that with buildings, right? You know, hopefully, <laughs> they're old buildings here, but all these buildings had blueprints before they were built. There was whole groups of people visualizing the building done, seeing every little detail down to nuts, bolts, wiring, plumbing. There's a lot that went into creating these buildings, right? And a lot of people had to imagine together and see it together and visualize it together. And that, that energy saw it. It's like, we can already see this building being built right here and it's gonna look like this, exactly like this. And that's the potentiality being increased, the soil, the space, the location, all these people thinking about it every day, getting together to, to every construction worker you can hear in there is thinking about their little piece and how they're putting it together exactly like the blueprint wants it till eventually this thing comes into being. The potentiality is already there. Otherwise, it wouldn't be rising up out of nothingness into something right now, right? And these pictures are just reminders of what we're creating. The beauty, the art, right? Well, that's why we create models. That's why we create blueprints. That's all energetic modeling. That's all working on bringing something beautiful into being and then sharing it with other people. And that's what you do when you create a business. You're, you're creating something that helps people, not just makes money. If you're just focused on making money, it's gonna be hard. That you personally believe really helps people. Um, you're creating something that gives back so that there's a really beautiful exchange and it feels amazing. So I just want to let that seep in. What are you visualizing? What are you creating? What do you feel when you visualize it? Do you feel it in your heart? Do you see it here? Feel it here? Feel it in your stomach, like the sense of certainty? Do you feel the turn on in your hips? Do you, do you feel the earth beneath you supporting the idea? It's all metaphors for feeling through the whole body and getting that really good endorphin response. Can you do that on a regular basis, three, four days a week where you feel really good? If you do that consistently, it might take three months. Depends on how many stories you got. But if you got a lot of stories between you and the goal, it might take a year. It might take two years. It might take a month. It might take a week. It might take three months. But as you surrender in more and more and you develop more feeling in your body and your body amplifies with feeling, you're going to start to realize that, that this thing wants to come into being and it's going to start pulling you along. It's going to pull you like Elon Musk going to Mars. It pulls him along. The whole idea of it, he thinks about it, he dreams about it, he talks about it. 
it's a passion. It's not just something he's doing to make money, right? Um, and it wants to be born because it's already exists in this idea of this non-physical energetic blueprint kind of reality and it wants to be born. And you're the one birthing it for lack of a better term. So intention is really powerful because you got to hold the tension, but not too much. If it's too much, you'll go up to your head and race. If it's too little, it'll fade away. So when you learn that balance point, like standing on a slack line and learning just to relax into it, and you hold that intention day in and day out, cultivating this feeling of already done, you're not, culti you're not creating it. That's what a mistake everybody makes. I'm going to create it. No, you're cultivating the feeling of it already done, and you're letting more details of it being revealed to you. Like as more images and more details come up, think of them as being revealed to you versus you creating those details. And, and this image is moving from this vague, like there's a, sometimes I picture a cloud around it and it's clouds parting and I'm seeing more details. And I'm like, ah, that's what wants to be created through me. That's what I am being asked to create. And then I go create it. Same thing, I could be out here every day. And I could start with just picturing the beauty of approaching women. I gotta watch uh, guys talk to women and appreciate each one. I can picture the laughter on a woman's face. I can picture a woman re rejecting me and me smiling or rejecting me and smiling just by saying she has a boyfriend, but she appreciates it. I can picture, and I can learn to keep my heart open and ground and learn to enjoy the whole process of polarization with a beautiful woman just by picturing it for a month first. Then maybe I talk to a few women. I don't even ask them on dates for a while. This is for people that are really scared. And I just ask a quick question and I, and I see if I can feel that feeling. And I keep asking the question until I can feel that feeling of just really enjoying the human being in front of me, not wanting anything from her. This is if you're doing it on your own, no coach. You got to cultivate these feelings of like, wow, who are you? I, I'm truly curious about you as a human being. I'm truly curious about who you are. And then you can start working towards, can I be a little turned on when I talk to her? Can I pull her down in and say, who are you? But from a embodied masculine place where maybe I can polarize a bit and you can start leading towards asking for phone numbers asking for dates because if you do a really good job of that and you cultivate that over time you're gonna get women attracted anyways you're gonna create that energetic polarization that is so powerful which honestly most guys today are missing so Hopefully you enjoyed this video. This is the video on intention. Definitely check out my previous video. Oh, by the way, put a comment in here. I want to see these. I want to see more comments. And I really want to hear what you think of this. If you've used anything like this before, where in the past did you do this unconsciously and built something amazing in your life? Maybe it was in sports. Maybe you were a star uh, athlete in, in, in football or soccer. Maybe it was art. Maybe it was something else. But let me know where you where you played with this in your life unconsciously. And then start to talk about how you're going to use it consciously. I really want to hear that. It helps everybody to grow when we talk about this stuff. It helps the channel to grow so we can help more people. You guys are awesome. Definitely check out my previous video on discernment. And I have a video from a while back. I'll see if I can find it and link it in the description. It's on creating a, uh, a VAK goal, a video auditory kinesthetic goal. And it helps to develop. That's the framework for doing what we're doing. And uh, I did that one in Austin a few about a month or two ago. So I'll see if I can link that in here too. Anyways, this is Brian coming to you from Bucharest, Romania. I haven't been here since before COVID. It's changed a lot. It's getting a lot more expensive, getting nicer too. And, um, and uh, all of you have a beautiful day. And remember, only the confident really live. See you in the next video.